Hey there, vinyl community. Um, hope you've all been well. I've uh, been away from from making these videos for, for some time. I seem to open up everyone by saying that, uh, but this time it has been, I don't know, three weeks or so. Um, actually got a sweet note from somebody who asked if I was okay. Uh, I am. Um, doing fine. I've actually had quite a bit of work. So been keeping busy, that and dog walks and keeping in touch with the family. Um, but I've been listening to more music than I've probably ever listened to in my life. Um, and that's why we're here today. Uh, so what I wanted to chat about today are 10 records that I never get tired of. These are not my favorite records ever or necessarily. Um, but they're just records that when I go back to them, they always sound fresh and new. That is not the case even for the records that I do claim uh, are my favorites. So uh, I don't know if anybody understands that distinction, maybe. Um, but uh, we're going to give it a run uh, with 10 records that uh, I picked out uh, that, again, I just I could listen to them over and over and over. And every time I go back, they still sound great. There's something about the longevity of these records that, that stands up more than others for me. Uh, so let's dive in. But first, I just wanted to speak a little bit to this, the new Jason Isbell record, Reunions, uh, which he was incredibly thoughtful uh, given the current conditions uh, for all businesses and specifically uh, for, for independent record stores. Uh, he opted to release this on vinyl one week prior uh, if you bought it from uh, an independent record store, which is what I did. Uh, it got here uh, a few days before it went live digital. So I applaud uh, Jason Isbell, who's always thinking about uh, the other the other person in the room or the other folks who make this stuff happen. He's just such a thoughtful, sweet guy. And we learned this morning that, uh, maybe not remarkable for it shouldn't be remarkable, but it is to me that this record, Reunions, is number one on the Billboard charts. Uh, that's the backside. Uh, Jason is, I think he's 41 years old right now. For anybody who's followed his career, he was in the Drive By Truckers first. I saw him play with Drive By Truckers a bunch of times. Then started a solo career, well, it was really with uh, his band, the 400 Unit, a phenomenal band. Um, and they were sort of below the radar for, for a while. I saw Isbell open up for Justin Towns Earl uh, at the Independent in San Francisco, maybe around 2012, 2013. Uh, Isbell could now, once he's back out there, could probably play the biggest venues in the country, or close. Um, he has sort of ratcheted up. First he went up to places like the Greek, the Fillmore, and then the Greek. I'm just talking locally here. Now, who knows what that is? Could he play uh, a small arena? I don't know, maybe. Uh, but it's number one on the charts. Never in a million years did I think that would happen, not due to lack of talent. Um, just usually music, uh, this, I don't know how to say this without sounding corny, as sort of deep and, and uh, cerebral as Isbell's music uh, doesn't reach the masses, but it seems like he has cracked that uh, that stealing, um, which only a few of the bands that I love in the last 20 some odd years have done. The Arcade Fire, Wilco did for a little while, uh, and now Jason Isbell. Um, so bravo to him. Uh, it's still too early for me to give my sort of take on this. Uh, movies I can speak to the minute after they're over, sometimes when they still have half an hour left. Uh, sometimes three minutes in, like a movie I saw called One Bedroom uh, a few nights ago, which was awful. I don't know why I kept watching. Um, but uh, I've listened to this a bunch. There, there are songs I'm not crazy about. What Have I Done to Help, which opens it. Uh, a friend of mine compared that to Rainy Day Woman starting out Blonde on Blonde. Uh, sort of a track that you skip over and then go to the rest. Isbell's Watching. Um, I'm going to blame it on him for that. 
but there are also songs that Dreamsicle is the one that stands out, as well as It Gets Easier, which sounds like uh, there is pretty clearly a song about uh, addiction. Um, so Jason Isbell, Reunions, I would check out his entire catalog. It's all great stuff. Now, two records that I never grow tired of. Uh, and again, these are just records if I put them on the turntable or go to uh, a streaming service and play these, they always sound fresh. Uh, and this one I played actually last night, late, uh, sort of in the mood for it. Um, my favorite soundtrack, the Inside Lewin Davis soundtrack, uh, the Coen Brothers film from, when is this, 2013, so when the soundtrack came out. I absolutely love the songs here. Uh, Hang Me, Oh Hang Me, Fare Thee Well, Dylan Closes It, or he's... Pa, no, uh, second to last. I was trying to remember what the word, what is that word um, for second to last? It's a pretentious word that I can't remember. Uh, Farewell uh, by Dylan. Um, uh, the Storms Are on the Ocean, The Death of Queen Jane. I, no matter how many times I play this, I just love it. It brings back a lot of imagery from the movie, which is my favorite Coen Brothers movie. Um, uh, just a spectacular soundtrack, wonderful songs. And uh, again, I listened to it last night and it sounded like I had, I was listening to it for the first time. And the word that I was looking for was penultimate. I don't even know if you pronounce that the right way. Most people who are watching this probably already came up with that word, and now I'm coming in late. Um, Inside Lewin Davis, give this a spin. Um, this one has sort of had a rebirth with me, an album that was pivotal in my discovery of most of the music that I, I call uh, my favorites. Um, but this record in the last few years, I've really gone back to a lot, and it is just... A fantastic record. I'm not going to speak too long to it because I have many times in the past. Uncle Tupelo's final record, uh, Anodyne. I think of all their records, this one which came out on a major label, the first and last to come out on a major by the band. I think this holds up the best. I think it merges their two sounds, sort of punk, Americana, rock and roll uh, to perfection. It's It's astounding that they broke up after this, not long after it came out. Jeff Tweedy obviously went on to form Wilco, J. Farrar went on to form Sunvolt, and the rest is history. But this record, which was just reissued by, um, by, Sire, no, Sire originally put it out, Rhino, I believe, reissued it <clears throat> um, on white vinyl. Uh, just top to bottom, five stars, fantastic record. Uh, next is After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. This is not my favorite Neil Young record. That would probably be On the Beach. Uh, all of Neil Young's early records are just incredible. Harvest. Um, but this is the one, again, I can just put on at any time, and it just sounds spectacular. Um, it's, it's such a mood record. Tell me why After the Gold Rush, Only Love Can Break Your Heart, Southern Man. Till the morning comes, I believe in you, birds. Oh, lonesome me! Every song on this record is great, and I just never get tired of it. And I've been listening to it for probably 35 years. That's I mean, a little bit of an embellishment. Probably 30 years. Uh, so Neil Young's "After the Gold Rush," timeless. Next one. This is my favorite by this band. Uh, I recently bought the box set that came out, which I adore. This is not the box set, this is the single album, uh, Let It Be by The Stones. Uh, my personal favorite Rolling Stones record by a landslide, uh, Love in Vain, Give Me Shelter, Country Honk, Monkey Man, Can't Always Get What You Want. This is outstanding. It looks like this is a first pressing London Records. Uh, how much is this? There's no price tag on it. Um, to me, uh, Stones during this period, it's just incredible albums, but this is number one for me. Um, and it sounds brand new every time I put it on the turntable. Sticking a little bit with the Uncle Tupelo scene, this one flew way under the radar, and it shouldn't have, which is 
One Fast Move or I'm Gone. Um, music from Jack Kerouac's Big Sur. This is Jay Farrar and Ben Gibbard from Death Cab for Cutie. Uh, it probably holds a special place for me because it's the songs are about Big Sur, which is the place I've visited most in my life. Um, I don't live, I only live a couple hours from Big Sur and I go there pretty regularly. I've actually been itching to go of late and as soon as uh, it's safe to do so, I will be there. Um, but these, this is top to bottom, just a tremendous record that not a lot of people know about. Um, comes with a DVD, which, oh, I do have it. I remember I loaned it to somebody and I didn't think I ever got it back. But I'm wrong. I got it back. I think this is the DVD. Or is it a CD version? No, it's, it's, it's the movie. Maybe I'll watch that today. I don't really remember it very well. Um, you can find this. Uh, it's on streaming services. It should be. Uh, and you can find vinyl copies for not too expensive. And if you're a collector, this is a record to pursue. Um, my this one merges the favorites of all time and favorites for this uh, segment darkness in the edge of town 1978 bruce springsteen's fourth and i think best record uh, from 73 to 87 springsteen all of his records were perfect the only possible exception being his debut greetings from asbury park which some would say maybe is four and a half not a five star album uh, due to a few tracks, but everything after that through 87, perfection. Um, and this this record changed my life, for real. Uh, it brought up things that I had never thought about in terms of society and class and a whole host of stuff. Factory reminds me so much of my stepfather. He didn't work in a factory, but he was a cop, which is kind of like close to a factory a blue collar. Um, this is uh, genius. I think Jimmy Iovine was put a large part in this record. And this record was on the heels of his troubles with his manager. Um, and I think it almost sort of sidelined Bruce's career, but he ended up putting this out uh, after Born to Run. What, what an accomplishment. Um, next, a uh, bit of a surprise, um, which when I was sort of going through, when I was getting to about 8, 9, 10, uh, going through my collection, I, I stumbled on this one and realized that every time I put it on, I love it. Uh, it came out in 2003. This is the Minus Five, which is Scott McCoy's band, uh, with Wilco backing him, uh, or backing the Minus Five, uh, called Down With Wilco. Um, Another record that is not very well known, came out on Yep Rock, one of my favorite labels. But every song on this record is great. Uh, the Days of Wine and Booze, Retrieval of You, uh, The Town That Lost Its Groove Supply, I remember they played that on a late night show, and it was tremendous. Um, Where Will You Go, uh, Old Plantation, What I Don't Believe, Dear Employer, such a great one. I have been watching the Tweety Show on Instagram, which is uh, Jeff Tweety, there's a little gatefold stuff, uh, which is Jeff Tweety's sort of uh, show from his home with his family. And Jeff mentioned this record last night, mentioned this last night and said how proud of this record he is and how he thinks, uh, I guess he had listened to it the night before, so two nights ago, and thinks that it's among the best things he's ever been a part of. And I agree. Uh, minus five, down with Wilco. Check it out. Uh, next, this came out last year. Uh, I talk about it a lot. It's the Purple Mountains record. David Berman, formerly of the Silver Jews, his first record in a decade. Uh, and is growing and growing in terms of my uh, praise for this record. It is... I think it's it's the best record since Jason Isbell's Southeastern in 2013, and it may be better than that. It is... There's so much depth. The songs are so... simple yet complicated. Um, 
he talks a lot of he talks in very plain terms about his own insecurities, his own depression, his own anxiety, but it's backed by the band Woods and this the music is is quite uplifting. So it's it sort of throws you a little bit, but it's done perfectly. Uh, just an unbelievable record that I was looking to this tour, looking forward to this tour as much as any tour I can remember in the last 20 years. Um, and unfortunately, uh, David Berman lost his, his what sounds like a lifelong uh, battle with depression just before he was set to go on tour. But this record is an all-time classic. I try not to say that loosely, although I do often, um, but this, I really mean it. Purple Mountains, unbelievable. Uh, two more. Next is a Sunvolt record um, that not in my top three Sunvolt records, but it's the one that I go to and it sounds brand new every time. That's Okima and the Melody of Riot. I think this is the first Sunvolt proper record without the Boquist brothers and Mike Heidorn on drums. Uh, this was reissued in 2018. I think it was for uh, Record Store Day. Just a, a fantastic album. Um, very political. Uh, bandages, opens up with Bandages and Scars and Afterglow 61 and then Jet Pilot, which is clearly about George W. Bush. Uh, an unbelievable record. Okima, I don't know, I think that's where Woody Guthrie was born. So I think that's what they're referencing here. Um, Extremely underrated, underappreciated, unbelievable. Next, another Bruce record. Um, Tunnel of Love, the back end of that 73 to 87 period that I talked about just a few minutes ago. Uh, I don't know what it is about this record. When it came out, when I was 13, um, I didn't listen to it all that much. I listened to Brilliant Disguise. The two, sing the two main singles, Brilliant Disguise and what was the other one? Tunnel of Love, the, the title track. But I sort of passed on this until 92 when Lucky Town came out. So did Human Dutch, but Human Dutch is just a not great record. Um, but as the years pass, this is a record that I go back to a lot and love. Uh, a lot of Bruce purists think this is his best album. I don't know that I'd go that far. No, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, it would probably be in my top five, six, but it's the one that really stands the test of time in terms of the sound, um, along with Darkness, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so Bruce Springsteen's Tunnel of Love. That is all 10. Um, I'm sure there are many more, uh, but those are the records that really, uh, I could throw them on at any time and they sound like they're brand new. Uh, and to close out, as I've been doing, um, an album, an artist that I wish more people knew about. I can't remember if I've covered this one already. If I have, I apologize. And if I have, that just means I love it that much. And this is the Ted Hawkins record, Watch Your Step. Uh, there's a story about Ted Hawkins um, that I've heard uh, that he was discovered sort of later in life. Uh, he was a guitar player on, I believe, the Santa Monica Pier, um, and a label exec discovered him. Uh, I don't know if, I think he was homeless. I think that's where he lived on the pier, or lived under the pier, I don't know. I've heard a number of stories, I don't know which is true, but he was discovered. They then sort of got him in the studio. He recorded a bunch of records, and then he unfortunately passed away uh, pretty quickly after they sort of got uh, as many records as they could out of him. Um, and I, I love Ted Hawkins. Uh, if you ever wanna like merge soul and Americana, there's nobody as good as Ted Hawkins. Uh, and I've had so many great conversations about Ted Hawkins with people sort of unexpectedly. One of my cousins, my cousin Buck, is a huge Ted Hawkins fan. And he and I went out for lunch maybe five, six years ago in San Francisco and somehow Ted Hawkins came up and we spent the rest of the lunch talking about Ted Hawkins and how much we loved him. Um, I've had similar experiences with a number of people. He's sort of like Nick Drake. People who know him 
uh, you immediately have some sort of bond with them. Uh, this is just all of his music. He has another record called The Final Tour, I think it's called. Um, such a treat. One of my favorite al one of my favorite artists to ever make music. Um, if I could go back in time and you know see any five artists, he would be in that top five. Uh, I don't know who else. Sam Cooke. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's that's a, that's a separate video. Uh, so that's it. Watch your step by Ted Hawkins. A record you should check out. I found this for for. Only a few bucks in a record store, and it was one of those record store find experiences where your heart rate sort of goes up because you can't believe you found this album. Um, that is all. Uh, it's good to be back. Hope you're all doing well, and I will talk to you soon.